Uh, how's it going, everybody? Thank you for coming in. Um, I guess I don't have my name there, but anyway, my name is Olu Maldonado, and today I'm going to showcase a little bit of web technology. I'll try to be as fast as possible, at the same time, go over some uh, breadth of information as well as some more detailed information. I'm an ex-Googler. Uh, I have a master's in electrical engineering from UCLA. Um, I'm CTO for our family business as well. Um, part of the open source community with Mood Tools Core, and I'm a Tech Tuesdays organizer as well. So in both ways, thank you for listening to my uh, talk as well as coming in today. Uh, I expect for you guys to have some fun, learn something new. Uh, I want you to, to start coding perhaps as well as uh, also invest in somebody else coding. You know, the, the idea of Tech Tuesdays is to start promoting the, the idea around here. Uh, start appreciating the complexities and even I think today you'll notice that it's really, really simple. So you'll, you'll, you, you'll notice both things. Uh, you don't have to read the code, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, everything is available online at that address. You can find it on YouTube or on our website later on, that presentation. Um, so building an app or any kind of web app, there are a couple of steps that are pretty standard. So just quickly, you're going to go through the requirements, which are business and the user requirements researching, finding out if there's something already pre-made with that, implementing it, deploying it, and finally profit from it. Uh, the requirements for building a Hangman app are pretty straightforward. People can take turns, people can contribute to solutions and hints as well. So not just have it for you know, two-person teams or a room of people. I just wanted to have it out for everybody to mess with. Uh, and we'll see it in action in a little bit. Uh, show points accumulated and so on. Um, platform technical things. If this is going to be massively available, then that means that everybody should see the current hangman. What are the opening place, uh, placeholders that are left? And um, you know, it could be on any device as well as on any browser. So as you can see, those are the requirements. So we're looking, we're looking for real time. Um, uh, and so uh, you have to look at the research on previous technology as well as current one. Previously, we had refreshes it was as simple as that you know you wanted to see the latest action you have to refresh the browser other things you can do are what's called long polling where you open up a connection and you just hold it open and as you can imagine that's really intensive on the server uh, and you can also use flash with some other little in my opinion a little hacking um, on each side you'll notice some of the projects so if you guys are interested uh, have a have a go at them and currently what's really going out there is called web sockets uh, web sockets would just quickly, what they do is they open up uh, a bidirectional communication between the two points, the client and the server. And it's a lot less expensive than the, than the previous versions because the protocol that is used is just a lot less um, in, in size and everything. Latency is a whole lot better, too. So what I chose for this project is to use Meteor. It's uh, open source. It's av uh, readily available for everybody. It's purely JavaScript. And I'll go over some things about JavaScript in a little bit. Data is synchronized across all the, all the clients. Uh, the compensation between different clients, mobile versus desktop, is compensated. The, I can push a code update, and it'll be updated to all the other clients. I don't have to let them know, by the way, this is going down. You need to refresh. No, none of that. Um, inside of Meteor, we'll be using Node.js and MongoDB. I won't talk about MongoDB that much, but that's another cool project or spe uh, presentation I can give you guys. Um, for now, Node.js is pretty popular now. Uh, if you're familiar with the industry, Node.js is actually overtaking the interest, as far as Google's concerned, uh, versus like Ruby on Rails. So if you're a web t a developer, um, you'll notice that there's an upcoming trend on that. And you know, just as far as local to the area and people that are interested in programming, how is JavaScript doing? Uh, JavaScript is actually very popular. Not only is it available now on the client end, you know, the browser, but it's also available on the back end. So what does that mean? It's double the opportunity of job opportunities. So I just did a quick search on Indeed, and the number one ranking for the set of the languages that I chose, there's 50,000. So it's the number one. So you would have thought that C++, you know, the more mature language would have been number one. But no, JavaScript is, is out there and is readily available. It's not here, but Java actually overtakes all of these guys. So, um, so here we go, implementation. 
Um, word of warning, here comes some code. Don't glaze on me, okay? Just stay with me as long as you can. We're going to go over the installation and the test of Meteor as well as the project. We're going to go over how to prepare the client side things. Uh, how to prepare the, the models that are involved. I uh, won't go into detail about the paradigm shifts and all that. Won't bore you go through that. Uh, we'll go over the server stuff, just a couple of things, just that I thought was interesting for you guys to look at so you get an idea of how much work was involved in this, and it's very minimal. Um, and how to secure the application and how to deploy it out where everybody can play with it. If you want to start playing with it and you don't want to listen to me, then I encourage you to go to this website, Hangman app dot meteor dot com and you can start playing with it um, the last I checked there was no master but anyway we'll talk about that in a little bit um, quickly nah it's fine so the installation is probably like one of the easiest installations I've ever had to work through in my life um, there's three steps to actually run the server and you can run this locally you you download it with a curl command and by the way this is only Mac Linux Windows coming soon um, so I still encourage you to try it out using a uh, uh, new uh, Sigwin, rather. But uh, for now, this is the way that's going to go with Mac and Linux. And you just install it once with one command. Everything should go through normally. You create a project called Hangman in this case, you, and you just run the, the Meteor uh, command. And you have a running website and everything. Even Apache, which is the number one famous whatever it has much more, much more steps so it's ridiculous to see how simple this is so we're going to talk about preparing the client and there's two files involved client.js and hangman.html but that's a detail um, we're, we're our objective is to create sections of content that is programmable or dynamic that when the server updates something or the client updates something the the software, to put it in, in layman terms, knows how to calculate the difference. It knows how to how to push those things live. So you're helping the system know what you want to do. So the first thing you need to do is create your layout, like HTML, typical thing. And then you got to start converting those things into templates, into sections. And you take those templates and sections and convert into templates. So in detail, what you do is you start off with the normal body tag. And you add these little tags, these sections here that are pointed out right there, the hangman one. That's a section. Then you create this HTML, uh, XML for that hangman. See the name hangman? And you define even further those things. At that point in time, you're already defining that template that uh, Meteor can understand what to do with it. Um, you, you start writing out actual code in JavaScript, you know, template hangman show. And that's going to be right there. So that if statement right there, the if show, the result of the function will determine what's going to display or not. So um, preparing the model is also very simple. Uh, we're using MongoDB. So if you're not familiar, just quickly, um, there is no relational database or anything like that. That's 1990s or 2003. It's kind of old stuff now. The way of the future, or in some instances, not everything should be non-relational, no SQL. But right now, it's just a document store. What that means is you give me a key, and I'll give you what I have. As simple as that. So anyway, to make the, the models in, in, uh, in this project, all I needed to do was three lines of, well, technically, yeah, two lines of code. That's it. In any other programming language or any other kind of project, you're not going to see this. So this was very impressive to me for me to see, where I can start off just creating a table you know, in normal terms, and it's defined for the project. The little function on top is just a helper function. But I, I thought I should explain how. In MongoDB, you can find a, um, uh, you can find a, uh, the, the actual game that we're using. So anyway. So yeah, those are the collections. That's the, uh, the function. So the server, we're moving pretty quickly. And it was that quickly So to create everything. So preparing the server, the objective is you're the arbiter, you're the referee. You get to decide who, peop uh, what, who sees what. You get to decide what logic is moving at the certain times. That's basically your control. You're, you're doing everything in the server. Uh, and you get to define this process as well as what you're publishing at this time. Um, and one of the things that you do is you, you define which methods are available for the client. So if I'm on my browser right now and um, 
you know, I, I need to stay alive, I need to inform the server that I'm alive, I'm pretty much calling people alive. If I want to guess, you know, my guess will be letter L or whatever, you use that function. So how does this all work all together? The server, the client, everything. So remember those templates, hangman thing that we defined? You can actually define events to them. You know, uh, one of those events is uh, get the value for, for the input and pass, o pass it over to the server. So on the client end, it, it just shifts it over the information to the server. So at that point, the server, you know, looks up the function, starts calling what it is. It gets the letter, and you don't have to read through all of it, but just quickly, if uh, I'm guessing the letter, so I need to keep track of all the letters that I've been guessing. I need to uh, update all the placeholders that are available if they were correct. And then I need to create uh, incrementing either the points as well as faults. So the hangman needs to go from no figures to more st stick figures, right? So, but it was just as quickly as that. That guess function does all the work of, ex of showing everything on the front end and on the back end, or updating everything. And obviously I'm not including all of the code, but you guys are free to welcome to look at all of that. Um, and once you start writing all those things down in, in that order or whatever order you like to do, once you get all those three components down, then you're done. And by the way, I'm not showing how this is done because adapter missing and other things, but I could be showing you guys how to build an application as I'm going along. It is that quickly. Um, so once you do that, just one of the things I wanted to mention is that all the data is unsecured from the beginning. And every, every single client that would have been connecting to your to your private server, your your test server, the one you're playing with, everybody gets a copy of it. Why would you do this? Because it's so much easier to develop. You forget about securing things and worrying about all of that. You just want to get to the working state. Once you get to that point, then you remove those packages. Then everything becomes secure and nobody gets anything. At that point, you actually, here, here I am removing that. And at that point, what you do is you, you have to instruct the server what do I publish to the client? What is public domain? So you just do a couple of uh, publishings, the servers, the games, the notifications. Um, and you can, when you're publishing, you can filter by user IDs and stuff like that. So you don't have to distribute it out to all of them. So it's pretty interesting stuff. As, um, and on the client end, you just subscribe. Once you subscribe, then you, your client receives everything. So. Uh, deploying the application is, again, a one-line kind of thing. It's, again, I, if, if I'm being repetitive of my surprise of this, it's because I was surprised. Um, I'm coming from my, from my background, my history. Nothing should be this easy, and this project made it really easy, the Meteor. So there's, no, there's not enough I can say about it that I'm impressed by. Um, like I said before, this is hot code pushes, so everybody gets the update. Say that you find a little error and you want to fix it, and you need to push it, and everybody has to reload their cache, and it has to refresh their, their web pages. Not with this. Everybody gets it automatically. So it's, so it's very cool. Um, so now, I mean, if you guys have been playing for a while, but in case you were not, um, I have two screens here. Uh, there's three active users, and this is going on in, in real time. You know, normally, like I said, you would need to refresh the page, but you see that counter? It's actually coming from the server itself, telling you you have eight seconds, seven seconds, five seconds. Um, and these are the placeholders on the left. So it says none, no hint. So I don't know who put this, but um, we'll just keep trying it. So apparently A, nothing. But if you see how both screens are updating automatically? None of the code that I showed ex explain how that happens. You know, part of this framework, it's, it's that, it's a tool. It wants, it wants you to reduce your burden of coding. Um, so you really just write down three things and everything should work from there. So it's very, very unlikely, or very unusual for that to happen. Um, and see, that's the notification that I was telling you about. And um, thank you. So yeah, there you go. You, so once somebody wins, then out of the three people that are connected right now, somebody gets to be chosen as the master, and they get to choose a solution. So obviously you're watching, but the game, you just put down whatever you like, and then region. So it just keeps going after that. So in the few minutes that I had with you guys, 
I pretty much explained the three-step process of working with Meteor, uh, how to secure it and deploy it, as well as already see it in live. And like I said, I've had people play with this from St. Charles and other, other parts of the country, and it's pretty robust. I've, in comparison with other technologies, this is light years faster of development than before. So, let's see. Um, Yeah, this is just a web app, so you're looking at it through the web. Um, if you wanted to make it a native app, what you can do is on the iPhone, you know, development, you can do a UI view that is attached to a web, the web address. That's what, how a lot of applications are done now. Um, they have the fancy UI that is native, and then just the little content is, you know, the mobile one. Um, actually, the the mobile the mobile graphics on Safari the Safari mobile that is on the iPhone it does have access to Canvas. So the Canvas HTML5 you can actually produce a lot of graphics with it, and you can even um, do some fancy um, image manipulation and uh, ga data gathering with it. So the capabilities of it it's it's pretty strong. I I'm not sure about WebGL on Safari mobile, but um, I. I can double check that, but WebGL is another standard that is being pushed now. So I would say maybe not now, but in the future, if it's not there already, I can probably find out right now, actually. Um, that's another possibility. You can actually write Quake. They released one, actually, a, a Quake game based on WebGL, and it looks exactly like you know, the Quake uh, game that you would normally see. You know, the last things I want to mention about this technology of real-time pushing and publishing and subscribing is there's a lot of applications. The one that I cho chose right now was just like a little game that I thought up of in a couple of minutes. And by the way, the, the amount of work that I did was a weekend's worth. It's really maybe about six to eight hours worth of actual working. Um, and it's, aside from the lack of stylings and CSS and other graphics and stuff like that, um, it's pretty much ready for people to start playing with it. Um, you can do real-time dashboards uh, as well as look up some people, letting them know notifications, push notifications, that's how it works. Chat rooms live. Uh, there's a couple of open source examples of chat rooms. So if your website wants to do live chat rooms, you can do it already. Auto-updating websites. And what's interesting to me as far as our business goes is you can do interactive displays. Like, for example, on that far right, there's a person on an iPhone interacting with the display like at a shopping star, a store. And they're, they're browsing through their phone. Or they get notified of uh, the new sales at that moment in time. Uh, quick little plug, we're pretty much done. Uh, hackathons. You know, the, the term hack has been used in the good way and bad ways since, it's ha since the beginning of time. But it's really the MacGyver of programming, if you will. It's about taking little code snippets like I was showing you today and coming up with a quick little program that shows proof of concept. If you're creating a company or you're having an investor invest in your company, the, the, um, the excuse, oh, it's not ready to the prototype stage, is obsolete now. If you can't produce something, you're not going to produce something. So hackathons is something that we're trying to set up in the community uh, with myself, Vicente as well, and uh, Jorge. Uh, to really get programmers like myself and everybody else that is starting to learn together on a bi-weekly sc schedule and just do little projects that are available for the community, civic opportunities or Internet of Things, taking Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and, and just connecting everything together. Um, starts at 7.30. We're thinking Moonbeans on North 10th. On McAllen, uh, you can join the meetup. You can use a QR code if you want to be informed of that. Uh, every thir oh yeah, that's right. I'm, we're thinking Thursdays, so every every two Thursdays at 7:30. Like I said, it's just a hangout more than anything right now. We're planning on doing a more like actual marathon where you go 24 hours without sleep, taking a taking a non like for, taken from proof of concept to an actual website or application, mobile application. And that would be maybe um, every six months. But until we have the scale of people, like maybe 10, 20, 50 developers, then we probably won't launch that. Um,
but this is the beginnings, basically. This is a little seed that might grow big later on. And that's, that's the hope. Um, if you have any questions, please Twitter me at, at, at OIBOMO, find me on GitHub, follow, etc. Or you can also go through our you know, company to find out more about me. And at this time, I'll open up for any questions. Sure. Oh, QR, nice. Any programming questions? Are there any programmers on the crowd? Just out of curiosity. One, two, three. That's good. That's good. So your your task, if I may give you tasks, is next Tech Tuesday is bring more programmers or come to the event. Um, and let's see. Yeah, it, it it's live. No, you don't have to use that. There's the at the bottom. There's the username and and that, and the privacy is. I'll erase it soon. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not really for profit on this game, so don't worry about it. Um, well, we want to profit from your viewership, not necessarily your information. In a way. Um, any other questions? This real-time technology, I think, has a lot of applications. So if anything, what I hope to, for you guys to get out of this is that it's really not that bad uh, to program this. Um, so for example, if I have my uh, class, and I could have some meetings in three months or so. In a weekend. JavaScript, there are so many tutorials about it. Um, there is no reason for you not to pick up a language anymore. If uh, the mayor of New York City is learning how to program, why aren't you? Kind of thing. Uh, if uh, the famous NBA player, which I already forgot his name, so that's ironic, but if he's learning how to do it, if the guy from um, uh, third, uh, Black Eyed Peas is learning how to do it, what are you guys doing just sitting here? It's so easy to pick it up. Um, really, I think the, the number of lines of code is probably in the 20s or 30s. It's ridiculous how, how little of work this was to get this going. Uh, you can run it. It's open source, MIT, everything, and it's just Node.js. So the Meteor.com thing, it's actually just as helper for myself. I just didn't want to deploy something on my own server. I was going to, but then I found this project and it had those nice little bells and whistles, so it does everything for me. And it's a free service, the Meteor.com. So if you wanted to, in one night or one weekend, you can produce something similar or hopefully better. Sorry? I haven't tested it, but there are large websites that are using the same project. You, for scaling of this, of this kind of project, what you do is you start doing a, a proxy, reverse proxy in the front, and you start adding uh, you know, servers that are deployed with the same thing. So you just receive it. And really all you're doing is your memory handling, because each, each connection, that's all you're doing, and bandwidth. And bandwidth isn't a problem. Yeah. What what's kind of cool about this one is you have two databases. The first database is on the server, so the, yeah, on the first on the first load, um, you are going to see a lot of down, but um, there is a local database on the browser using the HTML uh, databases. So locally, you have a cache of whatever information is available. So whenever there's something new. That calculation that I didn't talk about te uh, technically how that works, that calculation only gives you the difference of it and it just pushes it out to you. Yeah, it should be. I haven't done the A-B test myself, but um, like I said, large projects are, are going through it. And in a way, you know, similar pub sub uh, what, that's what that's called when you have a publication on subscription of like one person and you're submitting out to many. You know, Twitter is a great example of the scale of things for that kind of paradigm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I could go on about architecture of how to build it so that it scales out, but uh, I figured this would not be the time. But that's a good question, though. Well, if you're doing that, you should not say, you know, this won't do it, but I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. 
it should scale down for sure. Especially because the technology, like I said, is standard. It's the protocol is open uh, is open and, and this is Node.js. It not, uh, Python has it as well, so it's not just related with Node.js. Python, PHP has it. So if you have a, you have a language of choice, those projects that I showed on the bottom, uh, like Elephant IO, that's a PHP one, and then. Um, I forget what the other ones are, but yeah. So it, we're just talking about JavaScript and Meteor today, but uh, the WebSockets, which is the one that's actually doing the, the heavy lifting, that one's available everywhere you go. And you know, the scaling of it is just how well you can organize and uh, plan your, your, your layout. And obviously there's like Amazon EC2 and different things you can do. Any other questions? Well, the cool thing about this thing, and I, I guess, like, like I said, I wish I had my laptop that I could use here. The cool thing is you make a mistake, say that it was on the client end, you know, you can look at the console and it'll throw you the error right there. If you make a mistake on the server end, it'll throw you the, the, uh, the error right there on the bottom. And as long as you fix it on your code, you save it and it just updates all of them and it's corrected. So I, I would say it's even easier than learning at Code Academy where you're, where you're having to, if you follow instructions and press OK, press OK, press OK. Because this one is, you're literally building your idea. So you, you can go along as you're building it and, and you can understand what's going on. The documentation for this project is less, is, is like four or five pages. The, really what you're going to have to learn, if you haven't learned it, is JavaScript. And, you know, I, I showed a couple of code examples. Um, Code examples of what that looks like. Um, that's not the complicated one. This one's complicated. Um, the way I wrote it down, and the way you'll find it on GitHub, is it's reader friendly. It's I'm not doing anything tricky. Well, there's some things tricky, but you know, an average beginner will be able to pick it up pretty quickly. So you can take my project, fork it. That's the GitHub term or Git term, and create your own version of it. See how well it comes out versus mine. Um, and just study it, go crazy on it. Uh, today you can download the code, press Met, uh, Meteor, and you'll, you'll run the same app that I have. And you modify it and it'll update automatically on the, on the front end without you compiling or doing anything crazy. Very straightforward. Cool. Yep. Oh, right now, right now? No, but I will. You can, you can, uh, you can get it as YouTube, but you can also get it as a slideshow if you want. I can give it to you directly if you want it. Um, so we're closing out.